What's up, guys? It's Z Michael I here, Night Seventy Seven, here to give you a more darker review for some reason. The thief. The thief. You know what that means? I'm reviewing Thief for PS4. Oh, uh, you may not be able to see it. But my, I put the PS4 here just for this video. Um, I'm reviewing Thief for PlayStation Four. In case you guys did not notice. Um, let's just say right now, I'd like to thank my brother Danny Danger, he's the one that actually gets most of these games, so you can see reviews like Thief, Bioshock Infinite, um, Assassin's Creed 3 for Xbox, um, a ton of other games, the Call of Duty franchise, please, um, those are mostly by him, I mean, he really just lets me borrow the games, and I play them, and I give them back to him, and I would like to say thanks Danny for letting me borrow the games, I mean, he really let me borrow some of his Xbox One games, Dead Rising 3. Rise Son of Rome review. Um, the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition review, that's him. All thanks to him, thank you very much. And Infamous Second Son review, it's also um, him that he bought it, so I'll be playing that as well. Just let you know. Thanks, uh, shout out to Danny Danger, or Danny, just on Facebook, Twitter, follow him there, whenever he does anything he wants. But, let me just get past this. Let me just get back to Thief itself. Now, Thief is basically... It originally was a PC game in the year 1998. And yeah, sorry, I'm just edgy for some reason. Um, and it was originally on PCs, and it was one of those stealth games that really reinvigorated or really started the spark of stealth games from a first person point of view here. Let me just try to get a little picture view of this picture here. I got it on my computer. Basically, you guys don't know, I got a PC, but it's not a gaming PC, it's a working PC, you know, for work when I do videos. I don't upload them, it takes forever to do Back to the point. There's been three Thief titles so far, and this is the fourth one now. Um, it's more of a reboot to the franchise, let me just say that. And I would just like to say um, that Square Enix and East Montreal are now in control of the Thief franchise. And now Eidos, the developers, um, they have a lot of potential they have to fulfill here. And there's a lot of hype to this game. Now, a lot of reviewers, and not me, but a lot of reviewers out there, I'm not gonna point any names, have been kind of a little bit too negative on the game itself. But I'm gonna try to get into it, and I'm gonna try to say what's good about the game and what's bad. This is an honest review, in my opinion. I'm not saying any of my other reviews weren't honest, I'm just saying that this is like a controversial type of game right here, because a lot of people enjoy it, but a lot of people also hate the game for it. Don't know why, but in my opinion, Eli Montreal did a good job, like I said, good job, they didn't do amazing or outstanding like I thought they would have done here. But let's get into story, okay? Because I really like playing games for its story. What does it offer me? In case the game looks a little blurry here, sorry about that. I'll talk about visuals and resolutions later in the visual section, but I'll be going to story here. What's the story about here, actually? Well, you're playing a character named Garrett. He's on the cover here. In case you guys can see, he's just a dark shadow. He's also on the mirror here. Say hi, Garrett. Yeah. So you play as Garrett, basically a master thief who has basically been stealing his own life. And what happens is you have a partner named Aaron. And Aaron's kind of one of those cocky thieves who t who kind of doesn't really take like precautions. He always just takes our chances with everything. And what happens is you and Aaron, Garrett and Aaron, they go on a thiefing job. What kind of goes wrong when there's a supernatural stone involved? What happens is Aaron gets this, uh, Aaron disappears, and you go into a coma for one year entirely. So, let me just say, let me just say right there. You go into a coma for one year entirely, you don't lose all your memory, but your memory is kind of joggy. You don't remember too much about what happened in the past. And then you wake up a year later, and you're in the city, which has been corrupted by something called the gloom. And then the Baron's been rich, and he, the Baron is doing something. Something dark and mythical and paranormal. And, um, let me just say, uh, the story in here isn't really that interesting at times, let me just say that though. But back to, like, what happens is Garrett is basically stealing objects, and, but then he gets pulled into this really big thread that might have something to do with the past, and he has to fix, and um, has to fix the present, of what, because the city is going in havoc, there's people dying, um, people are sick, there's hobos everywhere, you can be counting them all the time, you can knock them out, which I did. But, um, let me say right now, the storytelling in this isn't really that good, to be honest. I really expected Eidos Montreal, who did Deus Ex Human Revolution, a game that a lot of people enjoyed, um, they had a great story there. How did that, 
how did the story from this game, um, Deus Ex, that was really good, and then they convert to Thief, which story isn't really that interesting at times. It's not really enjoyable, and the story doesn't even hold itself together. While the story continues, the story starts to, like, it's like a box of puzzles, and then start, the puzzles start to fall apart, and it just falls apart. It's like paper mache with glue. It falls apart at the end, and it doesn't work. That's how the story is like here. But, but I will say though, the first two chapters, I wasn't really that interested in it at all. That's when the third, fourth, and fourth chapter started to pull you in, and that's why you wanted to continue playing the storyline. Um, and besides the characters, there's not that many that you would want to know. In fact, Garrett himself, he's kind of lacking in character development. I mean, you don't really go that far into story time. They don't give him a backstory. They don't explain why he became a thief. What was his motives? I mean, like, why did he become a thief in the first place? What happened to his family? Does he even have a family? They don't even explain how he is friends with his boss, because they know each other somehow. Um, and that's it, really. The story here is just, it felt like the developers didn't really care for the story, they just cared for the gameplay, mostly. So, story-wise here, it kind of isn't really that interesting. And, just when you think the game's about to get good, and when the cut, and the cut, and, um, how it works out, the game just abruptly ends. Why? Well, I don't know. Cause they want us wait. They want us to wait for Thief Two to come out or Thief Five, whatever they're gonna call it for some reason. Cause they call this one Thief, just like the Thief. It's gonna rob you of your time. Um. And let me just say, the story, like I said before, story and character development isn't really that interesting. But there are some cool characters that I did like. Um. Like the Queen of Beggars, she's kind of a unique character, um, and that's really it. Other than Garrett himself, I kind of like Garrett a little bit because of his voice acting. He wasn't really the people saying his voice acting was horrible or it was like dark and gloomy, but I thought his voice acting was really good. So that's what I really uh, thought that was really good about uh, the story, which there isn't much of. So yeah, story wise, the game is a it's a it's a shitstorm really, to my opinion. So that's what's problematic here. Now, visually, let's get into some good stuff here. Visually, the game looks remarkable. It looks outstanding, polished to the bone. And you can tell that the developers worked hard in this game. Now, depending on if you get on a PS4 or an Xbox One, Xbox One, you're gonna have different um, resolutions. The 900p version is on Xbox One. The Xbox One will get 900p, and this one will get 1080p, and they'll both run at 3 frames per second. Um, PC, they always win, because they get the highest resolution, they can do whatever they want with their specs and all that. PC's better. You know, there's a lot of people, they'll say that if anyone has a PC, they're going to go with the PC version, of course. But, I got, well, me and my brother, we got it on PS4, because we needed some games for that. But I think we got a little too many, so I'm going to get try to get some games for Xbox One to review. Let me go back to that thing. Whew. So... Resolution wise, I'm just gonna, um, also, the thing about Xbox One version is, it'll take a longer installation pack, it'll take up more space. This version was 25 gigabytes. I think the Xbox One version will take a little bit more, or it's the same amount, but it'll take a longer time in installing. Here, it installed quickly, smooth, and great. And I didn't notice any frame rate problems during gameplay. And visually, the game looks remarkable. When you see the weather effects, the fog effects, when you see, like, the smoke in areas, and you see like details of characters movements around it's amazing but one thing i don't like is the facial movements they don't really move their faces that much when it comes to moving they just they just like yo see that storm over there saw that fire let's go check it out they don't like make like facial movements like you would do in real life they just like they feel like frozen you know it feels kind of odd and out of disjointed for the gameplay itself but it does do a good job. There was no glitches in my playthrough. Thank God there was no glitches. I thought this game was going to be buggy as hell. Some people may have a different experience from me. But I did not get no buggy experience. That's good. Um, so visually I'm going to go into design now. Now design of the characters. Like for example Garrett's costume. I really did like Garrett's costume mostly. It was really cool. He had a cape. He had a cor corset. That would cover his face up. So I don't want to see his face. Um, his costumes design like little 
nitpicky and like little like designs on his chest and his armor. It's kind of cool ideas. And uh, but some other designs of some other characters and, and AI are kind of wonky or weird looking in my opinion. But that's just me. I really did like the the design of the city because that's what the that city's called. It's just called the city. There's no special name for it. It's not like Middle Earth, please. But um it does it's just I think that's what they called it in the old games. I think. If I'm wrong, just correct me in the comments below if you watch at all. Um Also, um may I just say um I um I do like Deus Ex Human Revolution the game design and design of characters and art design a hell of a lot more than Thieves. Because Deus Ex was kind of a unique game. It was about robotic body parts and robots and augmentations. But this is an older steampunkish type of game. So I see the reason why the designs in this game are big and different. Um, I would talk about map design here. But I'm just going to go into it right now. Into gameplay. I'm going to start with gameplay right now. Sure. Gameplay, we're going to talk about right now. So visually and design like, it's mostly good. Visually is outstanding. Uh, designs mostly good, but now let's go into gameplay. I'm gonna talk about map design first. Holy crap, the map design in this game is messed up, it's botched up at times. Sometimes you're gonna try to go in the area, but then they don't really show you the actual entrance at times. Other times, it's just they don't, it doesn't really show that much stuff on the map. You can't put tracking markers. I try to do it all the time, I try to figure out how to do it. You couldn't, so you're gonna be stuck walking around. Um, most of the time, just trying to figure out where the hell you gotta go. They don't, um, so, for actual controls, so, like, see where the map is, you gotta tap the, I think I tap down? I think I tap the down directional pad button for that. Um, I will go to PS4 uniquely controls later on, but I'm gonna talk about design for a little bit as a map design. It's unworthy at times. In case you hear anyone in the background from Brother Danny Danger, he's just, um, I think he's doing something right now. I don't know what he's doing. Um, but mostly, the design of the game, as a map, is kind of botched up. It's disappointing at times. Now, what good things about the game, which I'm going to go into, are the thief mechanics. The game makes you feel like a thief. The game makes you feel like a thief, and that's what I love about this game. You don't feel a guy who's just, like, stealing little things here and there. You feel like a thief when you walk around, when you're in the shadows. No one sees you in the shadows because you're wearing all black. No reason, but um, whew, I'm gonna calm down for, for a second, and you real it feels realistic, like it feels like it has a realistic tone to it. So when you move around, you can like pick up objects, you can open up drawers and steal items, you can open up cabinets, open up closets, you can steal things and just like close the cabinet again. I like the animations where you give it to hands. I think that was unique what they did there. Um, and it's kind of cool what mechanics to make you do. For example, when it comes to like. Opening locks, picking locks, and safe uh, combination figuring out is kind of cool. So what you gotta do for the safe lock combinations here is you gotta go up to like a lock that's um, a cabinet or a door or anything that's locked. You tap the square button. You want to use left left analog stick or left analog stick actually. Move it around until it, it mostly you gotta tap it. You do this three times in a row. Or mostly five or six, depending on how hard the lock is or how further on you go into the game. And you basically do that, and when it lights up, you click the R2 trigger right away. You don't wait, you do it right away. And I found this kind of fun because then just feel like, oh, go walk slowly, zoom in, and walk slowly, zoom in, you back, walk slowly, zoom in, pick lock, walk slowly, pick lock, so zoom in, pick lock. It never felt repetitive, and that's what I like about things. So that was kind of a cool thing for me. Um, it didn't feel repetitive at all, and I thought that was kind of a good thing for the game, so I nice stopped there. Um, I, now I'm going to talk about the thief again. What's cool about this thief thing is that you can do some awesome stuff with it. In games, you would have to, like, shoot out lights or stuff like that. This game, you can do that, or you could like, press the switch that turns off the lights. Or you can go to candles and swoop them, swoop the, the fire away from the candles. You can, like, put out candles, like, do that like this, and like that, um, there's so much options you can do in this game that it's amazing. It gives you tons of space and tons of room to decide how you want things to play out. And that's what I love about this game, is the stealth itself. Stealth in this game is outstanding and executed 
perfectly. Mwah. Um, what I mean about this is this: um, the the game never feels like it's just trying so hard to like uh, be detected. The game it's up to you basically to get detected in that because there's moments when you can just screw up and you be detected and it's game over, or you can just like it gives you freedom of choice, and that's what I love about this game, and it works perfectly for the game. I love doing stealth. Because that's all that was enjoyable in my opinion. I'll go into why it's only enjoyable, but later on. You can also do safe combinations where you like like go to a thing and you're like like that. And you got like figuring out the puzzle. There's documents that can actually help you with some of these safe combinations. Or you can just look up walkthroughs online. Um there are some cool puzzles that they added for the game. So like these, these puzzles basically need you to think a little bit or try to figure out design of some areas. I do like the puzzle parts of this game. I think that they were executed enough. There was enough puzzles for the game itself, so that was a good job. Um, I do love the arrow in this game. Now I'm gonna go into the arrow because the arrow and bow, which is basically a bow and arrow. <coughs> Excuse me. This, the bow and arrow um, is a cool weapon to use because there's not just one type of arrow. There's multiple ones. There's blunt arrows. There's broadsword arrows. There's sawtooth arrows. There's choke, water, fire, blunt. So much stuff. You're all gonna go insane. There's so many variety types. There's even rope arrows that make you climb a rope and climb them up. And it, it's kind of helpful. But what this do is it kind of gives you freedom of choice, like I said before. Let's say there's a fire, like there's like a courtyard, right? And like this big square courtyard, um, and there's like a fire in the middle, and you don't want to go up there because you can't let it be like this and burn that out because it's a big fire. So you take out your water arrow, shoot the fire, and it like dims out, and there's no, and it's all dark there. And you could like kind of go in there and shoot past everyone and go to your objective. Or you can use like the fire, and there's like gasoline on the floor. Or you can use a fire arrow to fire on the gasoline, and it'll, bl and it'll burn all the enemies. There's also choking arrows, which um, is basically just choking people. What that means is, is like they'll cough and they'll cough, but they won't go to sleep. Instead, ugh. instead you basically about choking, and choking. You gotta take them out. You gotta boom in the back of the head, and they'll be asleep for the rest of the game. And um, that's kind of cool what they did there. I kind of like the idea of them um, adding all these variety of arrows. There's also blunt arrows that you can use to like break like weak um, sticks, or you can like, use to activate buttons from far away. So let's say there's like a room and there's like bars on the window, and you can't get in any other way. So and there's like a little button inside of it, but you can't get in there, reach. It. So you take a blunt arrow, aim it at the button, fire it, and the bars uh, move go away, and it goes off, and you don't see them no more. That's kind of cool ideas I like for this game, and it works, but some people are bitching about it. I'm not going to say who is bitching about it, because that will be disrespectful. I'm going to try to stay clean and, not, and and respectful for this review. Um, uh, Music-wise, I, did, I didn't notice the music that much, I'm just going to say that right now. The music, I didn't notice at all, really, to be honest. Um, but back to gameplay. Um, there are some problems I still have with the gameplay. First of all, Loading times in this game. My god, there are so many loading times. There's moments when they cut. This is a bad choice, Edo's did. What they did is, the city is this big area you can explore, right? But they cut it up the city into so many areas that it's like little houses for some reason. You got in order to get to another location, you gotta go through like two or three different loading screens that take you a maximum of 20 seconds. Now, 20 seconds may not be a problem. But when you're in the middle of a mission, you're running, and there's a, like a stop per square twice. And then it'll load 20 seconds. That's a problem with pacing. That's not good. That's unacceptable for this type of time. Loading screens in this game is ridiculous. They should have done what they, um, instead, huh, they should have just, I don't know. Another thing I don't like is, in this game, even if my girl, I'm going to be honest, they stole something from Tomb Raider. I realized this actually. So, if you guys, any guys play Tomb Raider, there's moments when Laura has to go to these narrow paths, and it's like rocking paths, and she has to like move in. And she doesn't just do the exact same animation, she does it different. She goes upwards, she goes downwards, or there's like a different animation where she goes up and she has to like crawl, or anything like that. That was different animations. And this, they kind of take that, they add narrow areas. And there's like a stump in the between. You gotta push the stump every single time. 
I'm not making this up. I seen this. It was, it was ah, unbelievable. I don't know what, what, well, how that happened. I don't know how Elos Montreal think they could have gotten away with that. It's, it's, it's stupid. It's stupid, and they, and they think they got away with it. They didn't. Um, another. Uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. I'm not. Combat is horrible in this game. I'm just gonna say it right now. It's disappointing. I thought that the combat in this game would be actually unique or smartly done, but it is glitchy at times and it is just downright angrifying. It gets me angry. So what the combat is, you basically have a blackjack, which is it's not cards or anything. Um instead it's basically like this small stick they have. It's like you can do like this or like that with it. They hit people. It's basically used for melee and takedown attacks. And you basically use that thing that tire attack you like this, you like this, you like this, and you can, and you can dodge attack by like pressing L1 with the PS4 controller. Um and this oh my god, the combat in this game gets repetitive so much that it will piss you off. I mean, I, don't, I feel like Garrett's not making an angry face in this picture. So, like, say for example, I'm at the window, which is right around here. Let's, let's say I'm right here, my hand is at, right? Let's say I'm right here, and the enemy is right here. Let's say I swing, I will miss him at some point. I will miss him. But if I'm at, in, like, the backyard, at, um, I don't know what it is. If I'm at the window all the way over here, and my part, and the enemy's all the way over there, when, when he swings, if he's five foot away, he's still gonna slice your ass. He's still gonna slice it. It's unbelievable. It's horrible hit detection that doesn't work. What the hell? Ugh. <sighs> Sorry, I don't, I don't really like being angry with my reviews because I don't like to. But not saying that I, didn't, I hate the combat. I kind of understand why they went with this combat. Because... You're a thief. You're a guy who's not really strong. You're a guy who steals the rest of your life, and that's it. You're not a Roman soldier, or a guy who knows how to build shit. You're not. You're a skinny guy who runs around stealing diamonds and skulls and forks and pens and spoons. Pens and spoons. Great job, Steve. Um. <laughs> oh, God. Why? Um, another cool ability is called Focus Energy. What this thing is, this happened at the beginning of the game. One of your eyes turned green, so you become part Incredible Hulk. And you basically get to see, like, all, like, giveaways. What this thing is, is kind of like cheat at times. What this is, really, is, um, you could basically see hidden areas. So, let's say you see, like, you're trying to figure out where it's hidden door at. You press the triangle button on PS4, you basically reveal the door. It's, like, in the middle of the wall, you gotta tap the button. And the door reveals itself. That's cool about that. Focus energy. So, say I'm pissed off. I'm like, okay, where's this door at? I tap triangle. It gives it away. Good job. I said it's a cheat thing. But you can also tap it when you run out of energy. Because there's a meter how much. And when you run out, you can tap it. And it will light it for just like five seconds. And then it will start to dim out. Which will give you enough time to see everything. What the hell is the point of giving us the meter then? You know? What's the point of that? Oh... Uh, there's also upgrades for your focus meter. So let's say you're in the middle of combat, you don't want to deal with your repetitive combat, you just can upgrade your ability twice. You can basically press triangle, look at an enemy that detected you, you press R1, knock out a stun hit, and then you can just knock him out, take out. And that type of thing, take out lunch. Not take out, like, take out, but take out, knock out, you know, that type of thing. Um, there's also speeding, so you can get things faster, you can increase the meter of, of um, focus energy. You can increase your lock picking skills, which make you faster in lock picking. Um, there's also the shop where you can buy um, all your arrows back, all your food. You can buy upgrades and trinkets. And what the trinkets are, kind of cool, as this wrench screwdriver thing. We basically steal plaques on walls. So let's say this was a plaque. I take a screwdriver. I steal this, and it goes to my collection. Or let's say I want to steal a painting, right? Well, I'll give you an example of one right now. In case you guys did not know, this is a painting from eight years ago. <laughs> um, what a horrible laugh. Ha! This is a painting from eight years ago. Let's say this was valuable for someone for some reason. So what does this scalpel that the thief can get and later on? You basically take the scalpel, you... 
just like that, you take out the painting, and you stole a painting. Congratulations. I have shown this to no one, and no one cares. Huh. You could also, there's also, um, hidden, ob uh, safes and hidden stuff behind paintings, which involves you, like, so, like, this. Or something like that, and you click a button, and it gives away the location. That's kind of a cool thing that they added for gameplay-wise. But, let's be honest, I'm not really into it that much. Come on. Did I say everything? No. Gamepad. Uh, <laughs> game controller, and this has some unique abilities. Light bar is used for lightning strikes. So when lightning strikes, the light bar turns white, and it basically is kind of a detection sensor or not. Um, the touchpad is, is the best thing that they've done here. What this is, is basically your arrow and supply system. So if you need food, you go up and to the right, like the corner right, and you tap it, it gives you food. That's all you can do. Um, then you can also, you, it can also give, show you your location of your arrows. You can also guide you to your arrows. This is the only way to basically equip your arrows with this controller. And I do love the AI at times. So... <coughs> Uh, so back to like controls, I thought that it's really uniquely used well here. And in fact, the only thing they haven't used here, which I kind of disappointed, was kind of this speaker right here. They did not use a speaker at all. In case I'll just look, put them right here. They did not use a speaker at all here. It's kind of sad. Um, I do love using the controls. The controls are all climbing and basically using your weapons and climbing up objects and sneaking around and peeking out at people's mirrors. It's kind of a cool idea that they added, and it works well for the game. So that's a good job there. Nice well done. I, um, I basically think I said everything I needed to say. Story-wise, it's disappointing. Gameplay-wise, it's mostly good, mixed at times. Graphically, it's an amazing game. Um, also, but a lot of people are going to be saying, this is Dishonored, but with something called Thief on it. Let me just say, Dishonored and Thief are two completely different games. Dishonored is one with choices and consequences. This has no consequence. Thief has no consequence. And it's a game. A good game for that. Which is why my final verdict for this game is going to be an 8 out of 10. Let me repeat myself. An 8 out of 10. And a 6.5. It ain't a 6 or a 5, what well, some reviewers out there are giving it, or a 6.8 for some reason. It's an 8 out of 10 in my book. I really did enjoy playing the game, but there was just some more for wanted to use a break it down controller. Unbelievable. I think it's dark now. Yeah, it is. Should I turn on the lights? Or do you guys like me in the dark? Well, the only reason I did this so dark was because I wanted it to be thiefy like, so enjoy that, you know? Let me just say this, I feel like Eidos was kind of being called in while they were almost done with the game, while doing this project, and I felt like if they'd been given another month or two to delay it, this game could have just not just been an 8 out of 10, but it could have been one of the best games of the year. The sequel for this game has potential. It does. And we just, we just need to put our opinions out there and say the good and the bad, and depending on your choice of score, that's all up to you. But in my opinion, it's an 8 out of 10 in my book. And I recommend it for those who love stealth. If you don't like stealth, get the hell out. Go play something else. Because you're not really going to play this game if you're not a stealth fan. Can I just say, um, there's also, you can also play like, like the original Thief. Where you can just do this custom mode where you put on the hardest difficulty. And you can basically like say, no special, like, uh, special takedowns only or stealth. Special arrows only. Um, no focus energy, no crosshair, all that stuff. That could be uh, considered the original Thief experience. I have not played on that experience yet. Because if I did, I will flip out and lose my shit. Okay? Um, in my opinion, Thief is an enjoyable game. It's not the number one game of all time. It's actually like this. But overall, um, it's just... Take your chances with this product. product. Just like take your chances with Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. For those out there who don't feel like it's worth 30 bucks. Come on. It's just take your chances with this. And overall, just be careful with your choice. I'll, um, I'll see you guys on the next episode of D-Mac 7. 
Also, one more thing before I go, like the video, comment below, and subscribe, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Facebook, my name is Michael Martinez, Twitter is the Michael 97 and also one more question. If I got, if I were to start my little podcast, this a one-man show podcast, or a two-man, depending if my brother would ever do it with me, what you guys ever check it out? Comment below and let me know, okay? Now, bye. God, it's so beautiful.